Welcome to ElderWorks Educational Services Education of the Week. Uh, today we are talking about spring cleaning and decluttering. This is going to be recorded or it is being recorded right now and we're live streaming to Facebook. So if there's something you miss, you can go back later and view it on Facebook or on ElderWorks website. Hopefully you enjoy today's presentation. I love organizing and decluttering. I'm an anomaly. Just so you know, when I'm bored, I declutter about 10 times a year. <laughs> it's kind of annoying to my family because things disappear and they're like, where is this? I'm like, I don't know. Did you put it away? <laughs> I'm the worst. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I see. All right, and if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to put those into the chat, okay? All right. Do, 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 do. We are going to be talking about planning ahead, managing the items in your home, containing the items in your home, streamlining and decluttering for fun because it can be fun. You just have to have the right mindset. Um, hopefully everyone here is muted. If not, I will go ahead and mute you. Let's see here. I don't want to make anyone else crazy. Everyone else is good. Okay. All righty. So let's see here. So the first thing you need to know is there are people and organizations to help you should you get lost among the process, need help with the process, or there are things that beyond your abilities. Okay, so handymen are your friend. I love handymen. I hire handymen mm, all the time because I am not good at fixing things. I don't work well with hammers. I tend to ruin my thumbs more than I get the nails on the wall. <laughs> so I hire a handyman whenever possible. Closet installers to put in closets if that's what you want. A maid service to help you maintain your home. And then organizing and decluttering services. There are companies that will help maintain your home with you um, on a regular basis. Uh, Paxum, the company that I also work at, is a A-plus accredited senior and specialty move manager offering organizational assistance, but they're more one and done. They'll go in, they'll organize you, they'll declutter you, and then they leave. They're very, very fast. They specialize in hoarders and large collections. Uh, they can do the simple organization to the extreme. Um, organizing and decluttering services I'm talking about are maintenance type companies. And that is um, something some of you may want. So you have an opportunity at the start of the process of your brain going, oh, maybe it's time to organize and declutter. Perfect time to tackle some of those projects. So you will want to sit down and set some goals. These goals, you know, goals are there so you have an idea of what you want to get done. You could veer. You know, not everybody's goal is a straight line. Yes, I'm there, I'm done. Sometimes you get some things done and then you get distracted like a squirrel, like Jennifer. And then you, you come back and you can do it again. Uh, you'll want to build an action plan from those goals. You can involve your family or your friends if you want. Now, keep in mind, friends can, friends and family can be very helpful or they can help you put up some walls. So they may say, you must be happy you're going to, those are really not the folks you want helping you because they'll depress you. They'll make you not want to do the project because it's not fun. Um, or there's people who will say, oh, you should keep that for later. No, you do not want those people helping you organize and declutter because you'll never get rid of anything. Okay, so know who to invite to help you. And a good glass of wine helps too. So if you do this in the afternoon or evening, what? loosen the up. And if you need to get jazzed in the morning, a few extra cups of coffee might help you get going as well. <laughs> and know the why. Why are you needing to get this done? Is it because you're just not happy with the space? Is it because the space is too small? Maybe the space is too large. Um, larger homes have a lot of closets, a lot of storage, a lot of space. And we tend to fill every space in every house we live in, whatever the size. So why are you wanting to do this? And how are you going to get there? So what's next? You got your plan in place. Well, the first thing you want to do is schedule your charity. Why do we want to do that? Now, that's, that's when you have a lot of stuff. If it's a few items, you can just put them in a bag and bring it with you. But the reason you schedule the charity now is you have a goal. They usually need six weeks plus in time to get to you because they're very busy. 
So if you have a lot, a lot of items to donate and you want to pick up, then you're going to want to schedule that early. It also, um, it also is um, a good way to make yourself get things done, right? So that's part of your goal. Um, I think someone's having a problem with their sound. Um, if you're having a problem with your sound, your computer sound um, needs to be going up. So if you go to the bottom bar in Zoom, to the left, there's a um, button called mute. If you click the arrow next to mute and go to the audio settings, you can improve your sound. So if you can't hear me well, go to the little down arrow by mute, go to audio settings, and then there's a little bar where you can make the sound higher or lower. Does everyone get that? If, if you're still having problems, go ahead and send it in the chat again. Um, <clears throat> give your children dates. So if your kids have stuff in your house or you have stuff in your house you want the kids to have and they said they want, he is, they said they want it. Give them a date to pick it up. Don't let them let it sit for years. It'll stay forever, it'll never leave. So if you're kind of trying to clean and declutter your house, you're gonna say, well, today's April 20th, I'm gonna give you till May 20th. You have till May 20th to come get your stuff. Otherwise I am donating it or tossing it, whatever it is, okay? So if it's college textbooks, you can't donate those. So it's gonna go in the recycle. If it's um, memories that they want, they need to come get them or they gotta go in the trash. If it's uh, collectibles, you go ahead and sell them. <laughs> it's like that. These are all the bad things I've done in the past. I won't tell you all my fun. Uh, purchase necessary items. And the key is necessary. Things that you buy to organize can also be part of your problem. You can get way too many organizational tools and now you've got extra clutter because you didn't use them properly or use them at all. Or they're sitting still wrapped in the bag in a corner because you just got tired and didn't want to deal with them. So don't buy them unless you're going to use them immediately and put them in their place. And then you're going to get your boxes, your bags, and your cleaning supplies ready with you immediately when you're ready to get started. Make a cleaning and decluttering checklist. This is something for daily tasks, weekly tasks. You can even use it for a monthly task. So you get a calendar together and you, you put on the calendar what you're planning on doing. If you see it, it's more likely to actually happen. It's like, oh, I have to go to the doctor's today. You go to the doctor. Oh. Today, I need to do the laundry. You do the laundry. So it kind of helps your brain keep on task because we kind of do forget, oh, I have laundry. <laughs> I should probably get to that. So make a list of the things that need to get done on a regular basis, put it on a calendar. And again, these are goals. It doesn't mean you don't, you you may not get to it. So what? what is something detrimental going to happen to you? No, but it's just something to keep you on task. Again, bringing your supplies with you before you get started. So today I'm going to tackle the office. So I'm going to bring in my vacuum, some wipes, some dust cloths, garbage bags, boxes for things that can be donated, and then my organizational tools that I've purchased or I am repurposing, okay? That's gonna come with me into my office. I'm gonna put it in a corner and get everything ready. You start in one section of any room you start in. Now, when you're going to clean, this is easy. When you're going to declutter, it's not so easy because we have value in everything we have, right? I love this pen. I must keep this pen. I have a thousand of these pens, but this is a nice pen. Okay, guys, you have a thousand pens. Pick the top 10. You don't need a thousand pens, right? Offices are the worst because everybody needs an office for an office space and everybody needs a pen. And you think, oh, I'm not going to have enough pens. So then you start collecting pens. You go to and your senior fairs and all this stuff. I am, I got pens. Here you want, I got some pens, right? Got some markers, but they're organized, organized into a space. If they didn't fit in this space, they would not get to stay. So go through your pens, make space or a coffee cup, put your pens in a coffee cup. That's a nice organizational tool. And whatever doesn't fit in there doesn't get a stick. Take your top pen. The rest of them get to go bye-bye. Donate them because the, the charities can use those for people they're um, helping get reestablished. They can use them for themselves. They don't have to buy pens because most charities are on a budget and they don't include pens. <laughs> so just you're, you're aware. 
And by the way, I do like to rant, just so you're aware. So managing the space. What tools can you use for your space? And objectively look at your house and your space you're in. And the space does not have to include the entire house. You're doing things piecemeal. Okay, so pick a countertop. Pick a quarter of a countertop. Pick a drawer. Pick a cabinet. It doesn't necessarily have to be the entire room. So when I say do an office, maybe it's just, hey, I'm going to tackle this drawer that's just heaping with stuff and I can't find anything. Maybe that's what you do. No big deal. Okay. And then figure out what tools you can use for your space. And I'm going to show you a lot of tools today. So we're going to go through that. Um, <clears throat> purchase the tools to help you clean, collect, store, and organize. And that are useful. Organize at your own pace. Don't have people push you unless you need a little push, but not too pushy. And then it just is not fun. No one likes to be pushed around. All right. We're going to simplify things. Stuff tends to overtake the house and, and it absorbs energy. Every single item you put in the house absorbs energy. And it can make your house feel very negative because there's so much stuff in your house. You just don't feel relaxed. You don't feel comfortable. You feel overwhelmed and you feel anxious. All right. Some people can handle lots and lots of stuff in their house and they just put on, you know, goggles and don't see everything around them. But they also don't have people in their home. Right. Because they're embarrassed. So they do see it. They just say they don't see it. So what do you need to make your home more efficient? What can you do to get rid of or what can you get rid of? If you have 10 spatulas, do you need 10 spatulas? No, you do not. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe they're different sizes. You know, one for jars, one for normal scraping, one for heavy duty scraping. There's your three. Uh, what are the problem areas that you need help with? There are tons and tons of tips on the web. The problem with that is you can get overwhelmed looking on the web for tips. So look at only a few tips and move on. Don't turn into the squirrel and get stuck with just for hours on the internet looking for ideas because now your mind's full of clutter, right? And then containment or disposable. Are you going to keep these items because you're needing them? Or are you going to are you going to dispose of them because there's too many? And disposing means recycle, reuse, renew, donate, or toss. All right. It doesn't mean everything goes in the garbage. Containment, my favorite topic. I love containing things. It is very fun. If you're going to buy any plastic or anything to help you get organizing and contain things, make sure they're clear. Do not get opaque like this one here. This one you can see through, this one not so much. If you have bad eyesight, you definitely want clear. If you can see through orange, which most people cannot, you could buy this. But the orange and purple signify what? Halloween, right? Or Mardi Gras, but typically Halloween. So you know these are for Halloween. You could do red and green for Christmas if you need those codes and you don't want to look through them. But for every day, everything else, you're doing clear containers with locking handles. These handles will save your life. All you do is open them, lift the lid. You don't have to struggle with trying to pull the lid off and breaking your nails. And if you have any hand issues, carpal tunnel, arthritis, bursitis, you can't get those other lids off like the Rubbermaid containers. These are good locks too. You just slide them out and then lift the lid. This is a really interesting item. People are like, oh, it's Christmas. It's great. It's got inserts for ornaments. Yes, this is very fast and great, but they charge you a lot for this insert. Do you really need to pay extra for the insert? Maybe, maybe not. I would not because I am cheap and I hate spending money. But if you have extra money and you want to do this, feel free. That's up to you. Use items you already have in the house for other things. So if you're not using it, use it for something else. Or if you're going to buy anything, make sure they're multitasking tools. And what I mean by that is I want to use this item today for this project, but maybe I'm done with it. And now I have this really cool piece, but I'm not using it. Well, use it somewhere else, right? So like this is just a Tupperware container containing lids. You do not need to buy a lid holder. You just get any piece of plastic Tupperware in your house and put your lids in it to store them so they don't flop everywhere. Easy. These are clear acrylic plastic bins. Now keep in mind, whenever you say the word acrylic, your cost goes up, all right? So these are a pl hard plastic 
They're really nice, but they scratch easily and they're more expensive. These are cheap. I'm just going to say cheap. You get these at the dollar store. These are good for storage. Don't put them in the microwave. They will give you, you know, they leach um, pathogen or carcinogens into the food you're eating. So don't cook in these. They're good for storage. This is from uh, the container store, which means what? Very expensive. Anything at the container store is expensive, but wow, do they have some cool stuff. Like I'm not allowed to go in there because ooh, I can stay there for days just looking at things. <laughs> But this is great. Why is this an interesting piece? It's interesting because they're using a wall to store things. So you're storing up a wall versus out into a room. So it actually is a good storage piece. You can make this. If you like to do things yourself, you can make something like this very easily. You can use um, different types of ropes and items from Michael's. Right, I'm not a seamstress and I am not artsy, but you can make something like this with wood and material versus metal. This is clean for a kitchen, but you can use this in a craft room. You can use this in a garage, this idea, not this piece. Um, you can use this in a baby's room. You can use this in a sewing room. You can use this in your baking center. You can use this in a bathroom. You have a very small space, Putting things up a, a wall versus out into a room will help you tremendously. All right, let me get back here. This is my favorite basket in the whole entire world. I don't know if any of you have been to any of my presentations, but this will always be in my presentations. It comes in little tiny sizes on up to super sizes. Why is it special? Because it's plastic, it's washable. I can use it in any closet, any pantry, anywhere I want. And I can reuse it anywhere in the house, the garage, the attic, the shed, the car. I can use it anywhere. So it's awesome. And it has air holes. What it's great for is snacks. If you eat snacks and you get crumbs, this catches all the crumbs. Plus, it's, it's uh, washable. So you can put oils in here, vinegars in here, gooey things, crumbly things. And it catches it all. So it is um, available in most locations. Home Depot, Lowe's, Star, um, Walmart. Um, Target has an off-brand kind of like this, but this kind, it doesn't have to be Sterilite, but this is a really good organizational tool. Plus it's sturdy. The only thing I do not like about it is this lip. You see this lip around here? And the only reason I don't like it is that uses up space that I want to use. That's the only reason. But if you have a lot of space, this doesn't take up that much space. I'm just being picky. <laughs> Chemical and storage organization. Chemicals that you put under a counter or anywhere on a shelf, they do leak, they will ruin the shelf. I've had it happen. So if you use plastic, anything that drips on here, it does not ruin the plastic because it's washable. It will ruin this. All right. This here is from 1986. I want to say 87, 87, 88. 1987, 1988. I am so old. I'm losing track of time. This is from college. I use this in the shower. I don't use it in the shower anymore because I have a house, right? But I didn't throw it away because I can use this for carrying chemicals all around the house. So there's two sides and there's a handle in the middle. So I can grab and go. I can take this piece, put all the chemicals I want in it and take it through the house and then bring it back. Nice. Plus, when I'm in other rooms, I don't leave chemicals on my floors as that can ruin wood floors and things like that. That's another of those baskets that I love. This is a tension bar. A tension bar is great because you can put tension bars anywhere in the world and hang things from them. You can hang bottles with handles like these. You can hang jewelry. You can hang tools with an F-hook. You can do anything with these things, tension bars. Okay. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Same thing in the bathroom. Look, on a riser, I just doubled my space. This riser you can use under any sink, in any pantry, closet, in your closet, in your bedroom, bathroom, anywhere. The riser is awesome. They have different risers, different widths, different heights, to put in cabinets and under drawers or under sinks and things. And then again, this is a skinnier drawer or a plastic piece. And this is a larger plastic piece. And this is just blue. Same thing as this, but blue. And this is under a bathroom sink. 
I should give you, I should show you my under my sink. They look exactly like that. <laughs> drawer storage. You can spend a lot trying to organize your drawers or you can spend a little. It's really up to you. Or you don't even have to buy things to insert new drawers. It's up to you. These are little tension bars. See their tension that squish and get fatter and longer to organize and separate socks because an underwear. See, there's underwear, there's socks. They set, they basically organize this mess into this. If you want to find things easier, this is a little OCD for my underwear and socks drawer. But if you don't have a lot of space, it's nice. Bamboo in uh, drawer organizers are wonderful. Bamboo is a renewable resource, so if they cut down a bamboo tree, it grows right back. So it's really nice. Um, these are really nice for drawer people other than yourself and yourself are going to go into because they're pretty, right? You can use these in a kitchen drawer. You can use these in a bathroom drawer, in an office drawer. These are acrylic. Um, these are great for bathrooms because they have little um, ridges inside of here and things don't slide as much, but they also contain things for bathroom drawers or kitchen or wherever you want. These are a little skinnier than this. So whenever you're going to look at a drawer, you need to measure your width, your depth, and your height of the drawer before you buy anything and know what you're putting in it, okay? Look at your things objectively. So let's say I'm using this for a kitchen. I'm gonna put things in here like a whisk or a long spatula or longer tools. You can also use this for knives so that you don't cut yourself. Handles go here, sharp blades go here, so you know you only grab here. They're all together. They're not flopping around the drawer, making craziness, and they don't cut your inside of your drawers, which is nice, right? This I could use for smaller spatulas, smaller knives, um, baking tools, um, anything. Forks, knives, spoons. You can get skinnier ones and just separate your knives, your forks, and spoons with these things. You can use it for a junk drawer because we all have one. Kitchen under the sink storage. Does it look familiar, guys? Yes, it does. Same plastic, different sizes under the sink. These are my favorite tools, okay? This is a baby wipe box with baby wipes in it. Now, why would a 54-year-old woman have baby wipes? I do not have a baby because they are not harsh when you rub a wall or a floor or wood. They don't dry it out. They have moisturizer in it. So if you rub wood with it, it's not going to dry it out versus a chemical like this can dry things out. This is great for countertops the Clorox bleach wipes, your Lysol bleach wipes. This is great for bathrooms, things like that. But this I used on my wood floors, on my walls, um, anywhere I don't want to leave a chemical residue. All right. Get off brands too. You do not need to buy Huggies. Bath, I always go to like Sam's Club and get them in bulk. They're cheap. And then I use, I use them all because I'm also OCD and I hate dirt. <laughs> All right, drawers, cabinets, and pantry. Again, this here is a piece you can buy at the container store. It's You purchase it to organize your plastic. It is a good idea. It is an expensive idea. You can also use a, um, a piece you already have in your house that looks like this. So if you have something like a drying rack you're not using for drying, you can use it for lids and plastic. But this is a little more expensive than just taking a Tupperware bottom and shoving the lids inside. You see what I'm saying? This piece is great because it's sealed and it keeps the air out. It's great for sugars, non frail things that shouldn't get moist because they'll stick. Flowers, it also keeps bugs out, which I like. This is the riser, which you can use in anywhere to double your space. Again, building up saves you time. And also, if you stack all this all the way up, it's going to tip over and crash and break. So it's better to have two sections that support your two items that you want to store. This piece, some people already have, they come with the fridge or they bought. It's really not a useful tool. Um, it does build up. So if, you have a, if you're a big soda drinker or beer drinker, you can use this for that in your fridge. It's nice to contain things. I would use this, if I wasn't using it in the fridge, I would use it for packets of gravy or for dressing or for any type of packet um, that you can get in a grocery store or smalls for a working area, your craft area, maybe um, extra small pieces that you just want to contain, non-frills, things to decorate cakes with. You can use it for anything. 
The only difference is up here, it has a little lip versus being solid. But if you have it, you might as well use it. But don't go out and buy it. It's really not worth buying. Multitasking tools are the best kind of tools. Uh, this was a box that I received with candy in it. It's a really nice hard box. Do I want to recycle it? No, why would I want to recycle something that's useful? So I use this for in an office with extra office um, like uh, staples and little, um, what the heck, I'm losing my mind guys, um, paper clips. I also, which I don't know if you can see, I use these little containers. Can you see that? The tiny little container that has a lid that opens and closes for my paper clip, which is very useful. And it can also go in this box so I can stack them. This is an organizational item that I got at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, I got one just like this. The top is, there's two pieces. This one slides back and forth so you can get to the bottom. It's nice and organizational um, a tool. You can do the bottom piece using plastic or bamboo. This is a tension rod, which you can use any closet, any garage, anywhere you want. This is an F hook. This is a shower hook for your shower curtain. And this is a hook from the dollar store. Why do I like these pieces? These are three of my favorite things. And I'll tell you why. This is like a buck and a quarter at the dollar store. You can hang it over any door and hang anything you want on it. For a buck and a quarter, okay, you can invest in that. Do you have to use it for clothing? You do not. Do you have to use it in the house? You do not. You can use it in a garage. If you have industrial shelving, you can put it in the industrial shelving and hang um, things that are heavier on here. Kind of cool. This is a net hook. You can get this in teeny tiny onto super size. You can use this anywhere you do crafting or sewing or in your garage. And again, industrial shelving, it, there's holes in the side of the post. You put this in the post hole and then you hook, well, this side in the post hole, and then you can hook things on there like your brooms that have holes or your mops that have holes, or you can put paint brushes, anything you want to hang and dry on here. This is so inexpensive. You get a dozen of these or whatever it is for shower curtains for like a few bucks, and you don't have to use them for shower curtains. I bought them for my shower. So in my shower, I did not have anywhere to hang my loofah sponge or my back scrubber. So I took one of these, I hung it over the bar inside of the, on the door, there's a door bar. I hung this on the door and then I hung my things on there to dry. So they didn't get moldy. Cheap, 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 love cheap. I should say inexpensive, inexpensive, great tool. And you can use these anywhere you want. Just be creative. And then share with a friend because you'll have extras. <laughs> All right, so plan ahead and know your space. And what I mean by that is, what are you going to do with it? Figure that out first. And then what you want to do with those spaces, you need to measure, measure, measure width, depth, height of anything you're going to buy something for, okay, to organize. Keep it simple. Don't overthink things. Don't overbuy. Don't spend a lot. And use items you already have in your house first. Repurpose things in your house first. So if you have a ton, a ton of plastic in your house, and I mean like Tupperware or uh, Rubbermaid or whatever, use that first. Use that for containment first. You can use that in the garage to hold screws and nuts and bolts. You can use it for, if you're a gardener, for your seeds uh, and your dirty gloves, right? You get those gardening gloves, take the bottom of one of your plastics you're not using, put it in there so you don't get dirt all over your garage or your shelving. Just think of how you can reuse things versus buy things. Buying is last. Okay. Again, I, I like to save my money for things like fun things, like going out to eat. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have time to cook. Uh, closet space. Closets are fun, aren't they? I love closets. Everybody has one and everyone abuses them. Just what we do. Hey, I have a closet. Let's fill it. This is a very tiny closet. And what they did was they built shelves. There's eight cubby holes here that you can stack sweaters in, you can buy foldable containers. Um, there's like these squares that fold that you can pop in there. I'll show you in a minute what those look like. This is a little double hang. Double hanging clothing is the best thing you can do in, in life, right? If you have a ton of shirts or things that are shorter, obviously pants, if you can fold them, you can do pants, 
up here or down here and shirts up here or down here. So you've just doubled your space for this tiny little closet. And again, they put cubbies up here for more storage. Do they necessarily need cubbies here? Maybe not, but it looks nice. This is inexpensive storage. This is something you can hang right over your door that people find in an organ, or usually in like the uh, clothing area, organizational for clothing. You can put socks in here, underwear in here, bathroom soaps and shampoos and conditioners, your extra stuff, but where else can you use it? You can use it in a craft room. You can use it in the garage. You can use it anywhere because it goes over a door and it's organizational stuff. You can put it in a pantry and put canned goods in here if you wanted to. But again, remember, anything you put in here will rub against this door. So you don't want anything that's going to scratch the door up. Okay. Unless you don't care and you can paint. You can always paint it later. If you're going to stay in that house forever, you might as well use it for whatever you can. This is uh, closet made and the closet made system is really nice. And the reason I like it is you can design this any way you want. I, in this case, this is from my house, in my old house. I use these drawers for underwear, socks, hats, um, toys, double hang, double hang, double hang, double hang. And on this side, there's also a double hang, double hang. So I made this tiny little closet huge. I just made max capacity because I have so much double hang. This is a hook for a room. Now I could actually put three or four hooks here for things like belts and hats and um, purses. If I wanted to hang them, I can hang them here. And then these shelves were for sweaters or anything else that was bulky. Nice, this was not that expensive. Um, putting this in, you can actually find these kind of solutions at any hardware store, or you can hire someone to put it in like from a closet manufacturer. This is the least expensive thing you can do. It's also what builders put in the house. It's that crisscross metal wiring. I hate it, hate it, hate it. Why do I hate it? Because anything you put on here, uh, like let's say I want to put sweaters here. Now my sweaters have crisscross marks on the back. I do not want to walk around with crisscrosses on my back. Right? It's silly. So if you have something like this, what you're going to want to do is line it so you don't get crisscrosses on your sweater. Use baskets, plastic uh, bins or um, you can use wood bins or any type of things like that to put on the shelves to contain things so they don't fall through the hole, right? But I, the good thing about this is double hang. You have double hang, double hang. This is more for dresses and longer items. And then a shoe rack down here. Shoe racks are wonderful. My two favorite shoe racks are the ones you can build tall, really tall, not too tall because you have to be able to reach your shoes, but they build up versus out, okay? And this is what everybody's closet looks like. My friend, Julie, I shouldn't mention her name, but she's my best friend, so I can't. Her closet really does look like that. She's getting better, though. So your bedroom. Typical bedrooms include closets with dressers, underbed storage, trunks, ottomans, clothes racks. These are the things you can put in a bedroom, right? Do you need all those things? You do not. Just because it looks nice doesn't mean you should put it in your bedroom. You need to objectively look at your bedroom and say, do I have space for this item? If you have a super huge bedroom, yes, you can buy storage bench with storage, you know, you can put things in it. Yes, you can do that. If you have a tall bed, yes, you can roll this under. Do you really want this in your house? Mm, maybe, probably not. This is not something you want out. You, most humans don't want this in their house. If you have a lot of visitors, maybe for visitors' coats, but I would use something like this in a basement. If I had a basement, I'd use it in a basement. This is not something people should be looking at. It's just blah. I don't want people looking at all my clothes. It's weird. <laughs> but maybe you do. Maybe you do need the storage. At least this one is made of wood and it's pretty, right? The metal racks, definitely attics and garages, not in the open spaces. This is a plastic under bed storage unit. If you notice, it has wheels. These wheels will cost you an extra 5 to $10. Do you need them? If you have a, um, I don't know, if you have a carpet, you don't need it because the carpet, it'll slide in and out very easily. If you have wood, you might want it so it doesn't scratch. What you want to do is look at the container and make sure it's rounded and soft. So if you're putting it on a wood floor, it does not scratch your floor. Okay. Baskets, baskets everywhere. This is just an organizational tool. It's not really a basket, but 
it's a mini basket. You can put little tiny things in for an office um, drawer. These are baskets from, I think these were William Sonoma or Pottery Barn, if I don't remember. They're mesh, they're metal, and they get labeled. You get a little chalkboard, you can write a label on there. It's just pretty and cute. You do not. Do you need to spend those prices to get this? No, you do not, but it is fun. And if you have billions of dollars to spend, feel free. But you can do this in different ways. But anything you're going to do like this, notice how you can see through them. If you're going to do this in a pantry, you definitely have to get see-through items. You'll never find the items again otherwise. They get buried, and then you just keep buying stuff, right? Oh, I don't know if I have flour, so you buy more flour. Oh, I don't know if I have flour, so you buy more flour. Oh, and now you have so much flour, it's like getting stale. So you can donate to the food pantry. <laughs> this is an item that hangs over a door that they're utilizing it for canned goods and bottles and dressings and baking items. Again, is this an, a used universal tool? It is. You can use this in a closet for your bedroom. You can use it in a spare bedroom. You can use it in a craft room. You can use it if you're a baker for all your extra bakery stuff. You can use it in a garage. So you can repurpose it. I don't like them because when you open the door, they typically, things slide and it can bang, bang, bang. And I, it kind of annoys me, but um, it does work if you're, if you're short on space. Here's your basket. You can buy all kinds of baskets, guys. Millions and millions of kinds of baskets. If you're going to get baskets, go to your discount stores before you go to a high-end store. If you're going to go with wicker like this, you're going to want to buy a paintbrush with thicker bristles so you can dust the outside. They don't wash their wood. If you try to wash it, sometimes they get gummy and smelly. You don't want to do that. Um, so use a, a paintbrush to clean the sides, any kind like this. They're pretty, though. I like the this one, except for, again, you can't wash it. This is a canvas bag for storage. Canvas storage totes are great because you can move them around the house readily, right? They're easily to move, easily moved, whereas these can um, hurt if you move them a lot around the house. This is more for portability. This is more stability. Small item storage. This is a really cool idea. This is from Pottery Barn. What they did was they took just a bar and a little hook and they um, made these little tiny canvas inserts and they labeled them and they hung them on a wall. It's really cute and you can do this yourself. All you do it yourselfers who are creative, you can sew something like this in any fabric you want. You can just get some baskets. Um, what I would suggest is one, if you get it with a handle, you can actually put the hook right through the handles here on the inside and then you cover it with your canvas or your material that you like. And then you get any cut bar. You can get a shower bar. You can get a little curtain bar from, for a normal house here. You can get them in the discount bin. You can do anything creative with this stuff. And then you can change it. So if you, you wanna change it for the seasons, you can change this insert. So, you know, the holidays, Christmas, Halloween, Easter, spring, fall, whatever you want, you can make this fun or not. But what I do like about it is you're building up against the wall versus out into the room, which building up is always good. This is a do-it-yourselfer. They took a bamboo stick, hung it on a wall, and then they crafted this and put it against the wall. Can you do this? Yeah, if you're artsy, you can. I can't. I can't sew a button on. But if you are artsy and creative, you can do any of these things yourself. And save yourself some money and make it so much fun and all about you. These are those collapsible inserts I was talking about. You can put on shelves and in little cubby spaces. They're great because you can pick your favorite color. You can pick the color for your color scheme of your house. You can just do black and white or white, but they collapse. So if you don't use them, you can collapse them, put them away, or you can pop them up and put them in, in those little cubbies, or you can take them and use them around your house, put them at the bottom of your stairs. So if you have things that have to be put away later, you put it in, the, in this little cubby and then you can carry it anywhere because it's got handles which is really cute. This is a little toolbox that you get at the hardware store. I like it because you don't need to just necessarily use it in a garage workspace for tools. You can use this for bakery bakery items, like your little um, non forels and stuff. You can use this for your little coloring, food coloring. You can also use this for your crafting room or your painting room or jewelry. You can put jewelry in here. You can do anything you want. It's inexpensive. So if you have this and you're not using it, use it for something else. I love shoe storage. I do love me some shoe storage. 
uh, shoe storage, uh, shoe rack, hat rack, coat rack, shoe mat. These can be used anywhere in your house. This obviously is for an entryway for your boots. So it catches your snow, your water, your, your crumbs, your dirt. It's great for that. What else can you use it for if you're not using it for shoes and boots? You can use it for your plants. You can put plants on here. So if you have plants in your house that tend to leak, just put them on here or use it in a garage. You can use it in a garage as well. These are knobs that were made for hats. What else can you use besides these things for your hats? You can use doorknobs, pretty glass doorknobs. You can use um, things that you can make. All you have to do is add a screw at the end to screw it in the wall, right? Add a connection. You can do anything to make things hang on the wall. Why do we like it? Because it's on a wall. It's not taking up space. It's building up, not out. Okay. All right, let's see where we're at. Use it under a sink. Yeah, use it under a sink. Thank you, Kathleen. You can put this under a sink to catch all your gooey and newies. Good idea. Um, this is a shoe rack. Why do I like it? Because if you notice, there's several. There's four here. I can actually do eight, 10, 12 if I wanted. But again, don't put anything up over your eye level. If you put things over your eye level and you have to reach, you can hurt yourself. So just be careful you don't put anything over your eye level when you're building up, unless it's hanging on a wall, all right? You can use this for your shoes. Um, you can also use it for baskets if they're thick enough. This one you're gonna use for shoes because it's wood, but there are plastic ones, there's all kinds. But if you're not using it for shoes, think of other ways to use it. You can put it on a shelf and you can put little skinny plastic shoe boxes in here and you can contain things also. So if you have it, you're not using it, use it for something else. That is the idea today. This is a bench that you sit on that you can put shoes in, but you can also, I'm gonna go back, put these in there, right? These different colors, pick your color. You can also color code it by person. So, hey, Bobby, you're blue. Jimmy, Jimmy is red and I'm green, right? Whatever you want. And they go in here. That way your person just goes to wherever their stuff is. Or if it's just you, Make it whatever color makes you happy. Happy is good. You like happy. All right. Storage does not have to be expensive. I found this picture today just for you guys. All of these items you can get on the dollar store. On dollar store, on dollar tree. They're like a buck and a quarter. Inexpensive. But again, you want to make sure squares and rectangles are always best for your closets and cabinets and pantries. Because they can fit into corners and you can make it tight. If you get round, this is not for a pantry, right? Because look how fat it is. Look at all this wasted space. You see that? That's called space. This is a high rent district and I'm giving up money. I need that space. These squares and rectangles are better. This is better. It stacks up. Great. This is good because you can see things inside of it. You're not going to want to put it on the top shelf though because you can't see inside of it way up high, can you? You cannot. You want to put it on a lower shelf. This one could have been up here right? Because you can see in it. But whatever is up here, you have to get down. Would we ever put heavy bottles of water over our head? We would not. That has to go down. So remember, anything in your kitchen or closets that is that you need to reach for over your head has to be light so that if it falls, it doesn't hurt you and it's easy to get out and you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to put a, a soup pot above your head and then actually drop it right? What's going to happen? You're going to break your foot. You're going to drop it on your head. You're going to hurt your hands. Nothing heavy overhead. Always goes the lower shelf. Safety first. Pegboards are nice. I like pegboards because you can put pegboards anywhere. This one is a craft room. This is a garage. This is a painting pegboard for painting. They just put shelving on it. They're cute, um, but this is ugly. This you never put in your house because it's icky. You'd want white, right? Or black. Look, that's so manly. Now, I mean, you could put it in the garage being a female. It's just so boring. I'd rather have some color. But what could you do with this? You could paint it. So you could paint this red or black or orange or yellow, whatever color you want. That makes you what? Happy. Because who's this about? You, not me. <laughs> magnets are good. Um, these are magnet jars that they're using for spices. The tops come off. 
You just unscrew them and they open. You can also use this for your bakery decorating items, glitter, uh, your craft room, anything. But it's a magnet board. So these just go on magnets. And this is a magnet strip that you put your knives on. So if you don't have a lot of space in your house or your apartment or your condo, put a magnet strip on and then put all your metal items that you want to grab fast here. Now keep in mind, the blades need to go up to the sky. So you just grab down here and never cut yourself. All right. Office files. Oh, the offices. Op I hate offices. They're a nightmare. People who are visual cannot do this. Like, yes, it's pretty. It's green. It's orange. It's red. Green is personal items. Orange is things I, that I'm done with. Red is hot. Need to get to it. You can color code these any way you want. But if you're a visual person, once this drawer is closed, it's gone forever. It's into the abyss. You'll never use it. It's just not going to happen. I've had so many people try this and they need, they're tactile. They need to touch, see, and feel it. So they leave it on their, their, their desk. They're never putting it in a drawer. So we need to find solutions for people who don't, can't put things in drawers. These are great if you are putting things in drawers and are able to organize in drawers. Always label your file folders. They don't have to be printed so pretty. You can just write it out with ink like I do. It's just so you can find things that's not for other people. These are great organizational tools. If you do a lot of letter writing or you have a lot of things you want to organize, this is great for organization um, for an office, especially a busy one. Typically not in the home unless you run a home office. These are great, these file sorters, because you can build these up, right? If I only need two, I put two in. If I need 10, I put 10 in. No big deal. But label them. The bottom one is typically things to get to someday, right? The top one is in mail coming in, mail that needs to be looked at, things that people give you. The stuff in the middle is things you're working on. So you could have these for things like, oh, I'm having an event. This can be the birthday party. Everything for the birthday party goes here. Or this is for my husband. Or this is bills payable. Or, you know, you can do whatever you want here. Rolling and portable carts are great for you visual people. Do not put them in a file drawer because, again, you won't get to them ever. This is great because you can roll it out and leave it out. And then you just put your little plastic tabs up here and you're good to go. They don't all have to be one color, but they can. They can be multiple colors. It's really up to you. It's what it's all about you and your needs. Plastic rolling carts are great. You can take the wheels off if you don't want them to roll. Um, they're great. These are wonderful because you can see in them. There's different kinds. These are for sorting smaller items. This is for bigger stuff. You can use this for hats, mittens, and gloves in your front closet. You can use this to roll out. So you can use it for your excess things that you need, but you can't, you don't have enough space for it in your kitchen, in your garage, in your bedroom, in your pantry, wherever you want. This is great if you need to take files with you. It's portable. Or maybe this is all you need for your papers because we're mostly electronic now, right? You keep your receipts in here. Maybe you put this in order like 30 days of bills or 12 months of bills or whatever. I don't know your organization, but those are just some tips. This is one of the creative things I found on the internet. They took some gutters that weren't being used. They nailed them to a wall and they put their paint cans in it. It's a good idea. So instead of throwing these pieces out, they used them for something in their garage that they needed. Great idea. Industrial shelving is important in your garage. Never, ever, 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 ever put plastic shelving in your garage. They say it holds a lot. It does not. And they're tippy long stocking. And what I mean by that is they're going to tip on you. They collapse. The plastic gets soft in the heat. So all of a sudden, your night shelves that are straight are starting to bow. And then that you're, it starts tipping forward. And now you've got a safety hazard. Industrial shelving is worth the money. You don't have to get the super industrial. You can get lighter metal, right? That's not so heavy. That doesn't hold as much weight on each shelf. Know what you're putting on here, okay? And if you do put something on here, you're gonna put them in clear plastic bins for storage to keep the bugs out, keep the dirt out, and keep the items inside clean and contained. This is a buildable, this is built in a garage. It's wood shelving built in a garage. It's very expensive to do this with handyman or labor because wood shortage, but it is a good idea. Again, you can hang your tools in the garage. This is the most expensive option here, overhead storage in the garage. Overhead storage is great because if you don't have a lot of garage space, you can put it up here. 
They also have the kind where you can push a button and it'll lower. You're gonna spend hundreds to thousands of dollars for these. If you have a lot of money and you need space in your garage, this is great. And again, this is a built-in system. Um, you can get through Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or any of the handyman stores. You just put these wall pieces on your wall and these little hooks go on the wall and you can move them anywhere you want. So those are good. This is useful. Why is this one of my favorites? You can put it in the chat if you know. I gave you many, many tips. Does anyone have an idea why this is a great tool? It is great because you're building on a wall and up, right? Versus out into a room. Can you imagine all these items just laying or in a corner or laying on the ground? Safety hazard, but you're building on a wall. Look at this. This is great. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I don't have all these tools. I have different tools. Now I have pool floaties. <laughs> Auto storage. Yes, the car needs to be organized as well. This again is portable. We were talking about portable files. If you go anywhere, you can take this in your car, take it back in your office, take it in your car, etc. This is great. You can get this option many, 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 many places now. You can put your grocery bags in here and anything that needs to stay cool inside of here. You can also take this on a picnic. You can take this um, because you can put ice in here or, or you know, your canned beer or soda or wine or whatever, water bottles in here. And then if you are going to a lake or somewhere fun, you can put your chips in here, your snacks, your, your uh, sunscreen, whatever you want in your trunk. This is a portable file just like this. I don't know why I have this here twice. I really like this thing, I guess. Uh, this is a toy container for your backseat to keep the children active. Is this why we would use it? Absolutely not. But we've all had kids and we all have things like this laying around and we're like, gosh, I used to have kids that I need this for. What am I going to do with this? Well, you can use this for yourself. We are road warriors. We go everywhere. We can put our coffee in here. We can put our cans in here. We can put water bottles in here, snacks, pens, paper, note paper. You can put your phone in here, extra chargers, stuff you need in your car, right? It doesn't have to be for kids. This is great because it hangs on the back seat of the car and it's got organizational things. So if you need more space to hold things, you can use your seat rests, right? The back of your seat rest. Not necessarily this, but I just like this idea because we're building up, not out. Oh, I bet some of you have problems with mail because every house I've ever been in has a problem with mail. Mail just keeps coming, never stops. So how do you bring your mail into the home is very important to figure out what to do with the mail. You have to junk, junk mail. You need to get on the do not mail list and they'll stop sending you junk. Ugh, I hate junk mail. Um, how do you, what do you do after you bring the stuff into your house? Can you add a basket, a bin, a shredder or a space for your papers somewhere? And how about a recycle bin in the garage so it doesn't come in? So some of the ideas that I have is if you are really good about not bringing things in your house, you can actually have your recycle right by your garage door entry and you just take it and you plop it right in. Now, that's only for things like magazines, general junk mail, things like that. But if it has to be shredded, it has to come in the house. You can put a shredder in your garage, but it can overheat in the summer. Or you can put the shredder on the inside of the door in the, of the garage. You can put the shredder wherever you sit and go through mail. It does not necessarily have to be an office. It can be by your dining room table. It can be by your kitchen table. It can be by the family room. Where do you look at your mail? That's where your shredder should be because you should go, nope, shred, nope, shred. Or you have a nice bin. Remember those stacking bins that you can go up and down? You throw it on the top. And when you're ready, Shred it, go through it, shred it, go through it. Or if you are like some of our clients who have a lot of mail and they don't go through it but once a month, you'll want to get a plastic basket. You know, one of those plastic baskets that I love, I showed you. You can get a different heights and stuff. Put the mail in there, put it, bring it out to wherever you're going to sit and organize it. But it takes a lot more time to hold that stuff in your house and then do it at once. It's better to do it every single time you get it. Okay. Structure is the key. 
it's very important. Without flow, you have chaos. And nothing has a place if not in its place. My children learned that the hard way when they were little. Oh, children, put your things away. If you don't, I'll put it in this basket at the bottom of the stairs you have till tonight or tomorrow or the end of the week, whatever you want. And if it's still there, it's not going to be there. Now, it might need to be a rule for you. Nothing has a place if it's not in its place. So you need to find places for your things. Otherwise, really, do you need it? If you're out of space, I'm thinking you have extra stuff. Or maybe you need better systems. So if someone says the building they live in doesn't compost. Yeah, that's, that's hard. But you can recycle a lot. And there are little compost things you can buy to compost if you want to do it yourself. I find it a little stinky, so you'd want to put it away somewhere where it's not stinky. But I've seen little cute ones in kitchens as well. Um, and make some rules for yourself and your loved ones if you want. And again, rules are made to be broken. I break them all the time. But it's just a guideline to help you stay organized. Are you going to be truly structured and organized and like, oh, my God, everything's in this place all the time? No, no one can do that. And if they can, it's a, it's a Christmas miracle. But no. Do the best you can. That's all we can do. So with your structure, put it back where you found it, unless it's in the wrong place. So for instance, my husband uses a hammer and he puts it on the counter in the kitchen. Does it make me crazy? Yes, it does. It makes me up. I want to use that hammer on him sometimes, but I don't. So he doesn't put it away, so I put it away. Or I hide it, which is fun because then it's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> oh, you lost your hammer? I'm sorry. It's a sometimes a game I play. It's not very nice, but it's hilarious. Um, something new in, something old out. So for instance, if you have a collection of shoes or purses or clothing, you have a lot of them, and you want something new, you want to buy a new purse, well, then one of your old purses should go. Or if you buy a new shirt and you don't really have a lot of space, then something old goes out. And old means something you're never going to wear or wear once every blue moon. OK, just because it's not on sale doesn't mean you need it. We are all fall into this. We're like, oh, my gosh, it's such a good deal. I should buy three of these. <laughs> do you really need it? No. But what you could do, what could you do if you find a really good sale? That could be a grocery sale or clothing sale. Friends and family. Hey, text them. Hey, I'm at the grocery store. Do you need? I can get three cream cheeses for $3 instead of nine. You need one. You can do that, but don't bring three cream cheeses in your house because you know what's going to happen with the cream cheeses, especially if you only eat cream cheese once in a while. It's going to go bad and you're going to throw it away. Um, extreme couponing is hoarding in disguise. That's 100% true. I have not met anyone except one person who does extreme couponing well. The person I know who does it actually does extreme couponing and then her husband sells those items at work for her so she can recoup the money and make a few dollars and still the people are getting a deal. But all it is is things you don't need. I actually had a person who filled her whole entire house with all these items she got a great deal because of extreme couponing. She had cat food and dog food and, and um, uh, clothing cleaners and everything you can think of. She didn't even have any animals. What if you don't have any animals? Well, it was basically free. Cool. What are you going to do with it now? She just put it in her house. If you're going to bring it to, like, you know, an animal shelter, great. If you're going to donate food to the food pantry, great. If you're buying it because it's really cheap or it's free and you're bringing it in your house and you don't need it, what's the point? You're taking up space and light. And light brings happy to people, right? So don't do that. Oh, it's a three-step process. Okay, so we're going to talk about helping others, not just yourselves. Maybe this will help you too. But this is the way I process and help folks, okay? At first, when I come in to organize with you, I'm very nice. And then you turn into a squirrel. And then I'm more firm. And then you're still a squirrel. And then I'm more direct. So for instance, let's take an idea. Let's take the pen, my pen. We're going back to the pen. Uh, we'll just use Barbara. Barbara, you need this pen. 
Yeah, you need this pen? Yes? Okay, you can have the pen. Barbara, do you need this pen? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, you said maybe, you don't know? Okay, then it goes. Barbara, do you need this pen? No, then it goes. So you only have one chance to say, yes, I need it, okay? So there's no no's and there's no maybes and there's no hmm's, right? Um, Shirley Ann's sharing, the Navy has a wonderful saying, a place for everything and everything in its place. I love the American military and my Navy brother. Oh, that's so nice. Tell your brother, thank you for serving. That's beautiful. Um, back to this, firm. Here's the firm part. So Barbara, we're trying to get your house organized and decluttered and you keep going into the kitchen when we're really working on the family room. Can you stay here, please? We really need to get this done. Okay, let's organize. Barbara, get your tuchus into the family room. We need to get this done. I'm just using this as an example. First, you start off nice, then you become a little bit more, more firm, and then you get a little bit more direct. You don't have to be mean. You just have to get stuff done. Okay, we're going to talk about hoarding. This can be for hoarding. This can be for collectors. Uh, collectors are on their way to hoarding. I know quite a few people who are on their way to hoarding um, and or are level one hoarders, which is the beginning stages of the extreme. Many reasons. Fear, fear of not having enough money to buy it later, fear of losing the memories. Those are fears. Becoming poor. My Nana used to buy canned goods and put them in her, her extra bedroom. Why? Because she was afraid of not having enough food and, and running out of money, not being able to buy food. Um, forgetting things, the memories are important. Perfectionists, they hoard because they're perfectionists. Trauma, death, divorce, abuse, loss, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Depression, the items are still useful. Heredity, it's a family trait. And it is a very complex disorder. It is a disease. It's like alcoholism. Same thing with hoarding, guys. And you can't judge people just because they have a lot of stuff. You cannot force someone to clean up a mess unless they face eviction or receive a citation from their local government. You cannot. It, if it's a psychological issue, it's not. if it's not addressed, the house will return to its hoarding state. The hoarder must seek help such as therapy, counseling, or medication. Um, this is the house we were in, guys, this picture. Um, yeah. I didn't put in the grossest pictures. This is just a messy one with lots of computer stuff. <laughs> but typically, the folks we help have already seen someone, and they're helping get their mental illness in check. We help them get their house back in order, and then they continually get therapy and psychological assistance to keep it more organized and decluttered. Is it a perfect system? No. Do they continue to purchase things and make a mess? Yes, but it's never as bad as it was once they're seeking help. They can live in their house comfortably. Oh, did I miss one? Sorry. People are misunderstood. They have defects, defects in their memory, and they don't see what we see, right? They must keep things out in the open. People who are visual, people who are creative, typically are messier. Um, must, they must uh, keep things in the open. Ignore everything else. They don't see it. They don't see the squalor around them. They have great difficulty making decisions. Do I want this pen? I don't know if I want this pen. Do I want this pen? I'm not sure. It's their brain. It's got nothing to do with anything else but their brain. Um, they focus on small things versus the large things, the bigger picture. They want to make the perfect decision so they don't make a decision. And un they have an unusual emotional attachment to animals. So if you're trying to motivate someone into getting decluttered and helping themselves, the first thing you do is you support them, you don't judge, right? I am here to help. How can we help you? Let them see good outcomes. You might get more cooperation. So little baby steps, right? If they can see progress in a small way, they can eventually see it in a large way. The, you must address the depression. Um, do piecemeal versus the whole thing. So if their entire house is hoarded, you're not going to just tackle the whole house. You're going to start in the easiest place first. Things that don't matter as much. Excuse me, I need to get a drink. So... Um, our extreme hoarders, we start in with something they don't care about. The garage is typically where we start, or a basement, or a spare bedroom, or their husband's stuff. That's where we start, because it's not as emotional for them. It's not as much of an emotional attachment. 
uh, cooperation with the patient or person is a long-term goal. So we're trying to get them involved to tell, help take care of themselves. Simple decluttering. Recycle your hangers at the dry cleaner. Every dry cleaner will take those hangers back or just put them in your recycle bin. They will get recycled. Uh, remove clothes with stains, pulls, rips, tears, fuzz balls, or are too small or are too big, right? You don't need any of it. You know, I used to be a size three. Am I going to be a size three ever again? Oh my God, no. Oh, I wish, but no. I actually, now I'm an adult. I don't need those things, right? Plus, if I do lose weight, it's a good reason to get new clothing that's actually from 2023 versus 1987, right? Not all recyclers take hangers. City of Chicago doesn't. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you, Maria. Then it has, if uh, the recyclers don't take hangers, then definitely bring it back to the dry cleaner. Uh, scuffed shoes, worn out shoes, or shoes that hurt your feet. <laughs> Just because you bought new shoes does not mean you're going to keep them because they're new. I bought these beautiful shoes that I will never wear because they hurt my feet. Are you going to plant a plant in them? Because there's no reason to keep them <laughs> otherwise, right? Donate them. Someone else can benefit from those shoes. Extra coffee cups can be donated. What else can you do with an extra coffee cup? I gave you a hint earlier. <clears throat> Anyone? That's right, pens. Good job, Mary. Good job, Maria. Uh, Maria says shoe stores take donated shoes in good shape like DFW. Thank you, Maria. Maria's great. We're going to have to hire Maria. Um, what you can also do with your coffee cups is if it's a cute coffee cup or a nice coffee cup, you can put a plant in it and give it to someone as a housewarming gift. You can put a plant in it and keep it for yourself on your window sill with plants, right? You can put seeds in it and grow plants. It's a wonderful tool. Or you can donate them. Uh, paint that's one, over one year old is no longer good. Okay, so you need to get rid of it. If it's an acrylic paint, uh, a house paint, latex paint, you can open it up and dry it out and then you can throw it away. You can also put kitty litter in it and the kitty litter will absorb the paint, it'll dry up and you can throw it away. If it is an oil based, it must go to the, um, the center that takes hazardous waste, okay? Uh, Kathleen says, pictures, photographs. Oh, she wants suggestions for pictures. Oh yeah, those pictures are tart. Hold on one sec, I'll get right to you, Kathleen. Artist filled cup with a sort of paint brushes, yes. If you're a painter, use them for paint brushes. Great idea. You're gonna to wanna to get a big cup though, you painters. I know you, you need a lot of brushes. <laughs> Unless it's watercolor, then you can use a smaller one. Um, suggestions for photos and photographs. My husband spent a year scanning every single picture and putting it on the cloud. So anybody in my family can see those pictures anytime they want. And whenever we have family parties, they roll on the TV. So you can always see those photos. Um, if you're never going to open a photo album, which most people do not, um, and you can't contain them anymore, what I would suggest is you try to get them scanned. If you can't do it yourself, there are companies that will do that for you. It is expensive process, but it is worth it um, to keep. It is a nightmare for everybody, Kathleen. Um, you can also make a collage on your wall of family photos. So if you have specific people that you loved in your family, you can, you know, like kids, grandma, grandma, great grandma, you can do collages or you can do collages from the beginning of time. The oldest person to the new youngest person, you know, that would be pretty cool too. But walls are better. Um, unfortunately, photo albums are not so good. I just, once we scanned every photo, we threw out every single picture that we had. They're all gone, but we'll never lose them because they're on the cloud and they're backed up, everything's backed up. All right. Throw away anything, toss or toss anything. I should say toss. Chipped, cracked, stained, damaged, or anything missing lids. Now the items that are missing lids that can be repurposed to hold things, you can keep, right? That you can slide in and out of drawers or cabinets, but otherwise they have to go. Um, junk mail, we don't keep junk mail. Magazines, paperback books, and anything you haven't read in a while that you will never read again. If you're using it for decorating to add color to your room, great. Um, otherwise, share them. 
you can sell your books, you can bring them to libraries, you can donate them. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with books. Paperback books typically don't have a lot of value because once you read them, they get ruined easily, but you can bring them to those book buyers. They might give you 10 cents a book or 50 cents. I don't know, not much. Um, oh, uh, connection between hoarding and extreme love of animals. So there's different types of hoarders. There's hoarders who hoard things in their house, like stuff. And then there are animal hoarders. There's two types of people. Um, some people have both. Extreme animal hoarders definitely have a psychological issue. Um, just so you know, my hoarding presentation is an hour to two hours long. So, oh, and we are over time. I have to hurry. Um, hoarding of animals, people see that they're trying to save the animals, that they're doing everything they can for the animals. They love their animals, but what they don't see is the squalor around the animals, the feces, the urine, the dead animals. It, it's very, very, um, it's very awful. And if you want to talk about that later, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But we're out of time, so I have to hurry here. I'm so sorry. Um, shred your old receipts. I shred receipts every, um, I'd say quarter. I'd go through them, like the, the grocery store receipts, your bank transactions, like your deposits. You see it in your account. You know it's done. Shred it. Okay. Gas receipts, things like that. Manuals for electronics and items you no longer own, you don't need them. You do not need any manuals for anything you ever buy because they're all on the web. You can get any manual you want on the web. Or you can just scan that manual and keep it that way, but don't keep it. Don't keep the manual itself. When we moved, we had manuals for 15 years in a Rubbermaid container that my husband kept. Not me, because I don't care about that stuff, but he did. He's like, I shouldn't have done that. So now he scans everything. He's, he's learned. Uh, donate anything in excess because it always helps someone. Decluttering your life. I have enough. I don't need to hold on to things. What do I need to keep? Just in case is not a good reason to keep something. Memories are always with you. The stuff can go. That is 100% true. If you are decluttering, take pictures of the items that you used to love and that you're, you're giving to other people. And you can always make a collage of those as well. Uh, don't take free stuff unless you're going to use it. Um, your flow takes precedence. So if you have someone helping you, it's got to be about the way you bring things in the house, the way you use things, the way you, you live. Um, don't use the person that's helping you flow because you, it won't work. It's got to be about you, even if it means putting things on counters. Uh, document your progress. Take pictures of before and after. That's really great help. Before, the desk was this, and now it's this. Even if there's a little, it looks so much better. And then again, schedule your donation pickup now. And then hang with supportive friends and family. Naysayers are not good for your soul, guys. Negative people also are cluttered. We allow people to be in our lives because we love them. Um, we sometimes let people in our lives because we think they're good for us and they're not. So know who your friends and family truly are that can help you through the process and your life. I actually have um, let go of a few friends because of their negativity. I, I, I need happy in my life. So that's that's just something I wanted to share. So in regard to maintaining your house, maintain the respect of the person living in the house or persons. So even if you are organizing and decluttering the house, you have to remember there might be other people living with you who also need to live in that house. So maintain respect for them as well. Empathize with issues, but don't become part of the problem. Um, again, oh, you should keep that. You're now part of the problem. Whoever owns the items in the house should always be included in decision-making. Um, if you are trying to help someone, so for instance, we've had adult children have us come in the house when mom is in the hospital and say, hey, I need you to declutter the entire house. And then mom comes back and is like, where's my house? You have to respect the person who owns the stuff. That's very um, degrading and rude and disrespectful to the person who owns it if you do that. So uh, watch for signs of uh, old behaviors. So if someone was a hoarder and you're getting on track and they're starting to do the same old habits, kind of remind them nicely, hey, remember this, da, 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 da. don't shame them. All right, declutter now for a simplified lifestyle where you can enjoy life and live versus living around your stuff. All right, there's, let's see here. Shredding events. If you go out Saturday, April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., Earth Day Shred event at the Peggy Note Bart Nature Museum with Representative Margaret Croak and Alderman Timmy Cridson. Just so you know. 
Um, if you can't get to shredding events, some of the banks um, offer shredding as a regular thing, or they have shredding days. So you can check with your bank as well if you have a ton to shred. All right. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm going to go ahead and get off of live. I'm going to stop recording. Hold on one sec here.